Hi, my name is Paul and I'm presenting on a benchmarking science methods for test and extreme interpretation. And the author of this paper is, uh, as you can see on the screen, my name is Paul Mtamse. You know, I'm my details. So in this presentation, we will explore the findings of a study published in the Natural uh, Science Intelligence that uh, investigated the effectiveness of various saliency methods in aiding doctors with interpreting X-ray, uh, chest X-rays. So uh, deep learning has become a powerful tool in medical imaging, aiding and uh, tasks such as the detection and classification. Saliency maps are various uh, representations that aim at explaining, aim to explain the rationale behind the model's prediction by uh, highlighting the image regions that most influence the, the outcome. While saliency maps hold promise, uh, hold promise for improved explainability, the healthcare, their effectiveness in real world clinical settings needs, of course, a careful evaluation. Yes, so um, what's the motivation for this? Of course, ideas maps, uh, they, have, uh, they have great interaction for explaining deep learning models in medical settings. Of course, however, uh, their clinical utility remains unclear due to the lack of rigorous evaluations. So this study aims at assessing the effectiveness of saliency methods for chest uh, X-ray interpretation. Uh, so the methods that were used uh, for this uh, for this study were seven saliency methods, which uh, include the grad cam, the IGN cam, the spore cam, vanilla cam, uh, grad cam plus plus integrated gradient, and smooth uh, grad cam plus plus. So these methods were evaluated against three common uh, commonly used CNN architectures, which is a DeskNet one to one, ResNet one five two, and then the inception version four to assess the effectiveness of the saliency. Uh, method. The study employed two metrics, which is the localization uh, fidelity, that's the LF, and the segmentation uh, quality. Of course, additionally, a human benchmark was uh, established by obtaining expert annotations for X-ray, chest X-ray segmentation, which served as the reference point for evaluating the saliency methods performance. So uh, the methods, uh, so we're going to briefly look at each of them. Uh, so grad calm, which is a gradient weight class activation map. Uh, this is best, uh, it is a gradient based method that highlights the regions with the strongest gradient, gradients aiming to identify image uh, regions that most influence the model prediction. Then the IGN calm utilizes the principle of components that capture the most uh, relevant features of uh, for class discrimination, potentially providing a broader focus beyond the purely class uh, specific features identified by the grad cam. We have the score cam, which assigns weight to uh, feature maps uh, based on their influence on the model's final score, um, offering the model's flexibility approach compared to a grad cam's reliance on solid gradient. <clears throat> and we have the vanilla cam, uh, similar to grad cam, but this is a rectified gradient instead of a raw gradient to address potential issues with the gradient, uh, the gradient uh, negative gradients. Then uh, in addition, we have uh, the grad cam uh, plus plus. This method defines the class activation map denoted by the grad cam by incorporating channel-wise importance weights, leading to potential more precise localization. Then we have the integrated uh, gradients, which uh, uh, computes the average of the model's gradient with respect to the input image uh, over multiple noise injection, aiming at achieving a smoother and more robust salient map. Then uh, finally, we have the smooth grad cam, uh, which combines the smooth technique of the smooth grad cam with the technical, with, with, with the, the channel importance rate of the grad cam plus plus, potentially leading to improve the robust, uh, robust and accuracy. So the CNN uh, uh, architectures that we use, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have the DESNET 121, we have the ResNet 152, then we have the Inception uh, uh, version 4. So uh, the evaluation matrices that were used, we have the localization fidelity, which uh, quantifies, this metric quantifies the degree to which the saliency map overlaps with the bounds, with the bound box of the pathology in the ground truth uh, annotation, you can see in the next picture, I mean the next slide. And then a segment quality, this metric measures the similarity between the saliency map and the ground truth segmentation mask, which provides a more detailed uh, uh, representation of the pathology region. 
So uh, from this uh, from this slide, we can see that we have the benchmark, the human benchmark that is here. Yes, then we have the salience method that, uh, uh, right here, then we have the ground truth. So this is what is actually um, put in the machine that is going to be learned or that is going to be studied by the human. So set a benchmark, and then we compare with the salience method. Yes, uh, that we have uh, the, the seven salience methods that are going to be used to um, to evaluate, yes. So the benchmark serves as a reference point to compare the performance of the saliency, um, the saliency methods. Then, um, so uh, the performance, the performance uh, are comparison of the three active cells. So the first one, we start with the death net, as you can see here on the death net. We see that uh, we see, um, uh, we have the disk, okay, yeah. So we have the grad cam, which, has, which achieves the highest localization fidelity, which is 0 0.52, and then the segmentation quality, which is 0 0.61 among the evaluated method. Of course, all the methods are fell short of the human benchmark. So the human benchmark is 0 0.87 on the localization fidelity and SQ, which is 0 0.92. But when you compare with, uh, with what uh, the grad cam has come up with, we have it's at 0 0.52 and 0 0.61. Of course, that means it's a, a, a short for inside. So the gap between the salience methods and the human performance was larger for smaller and more complex uh, uh, pathologies. Yes. yes, so then we compare, uh, that we, 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 we perform a comparison with a resonate 152. And of course, we find that the grand cam plus plus achieved uh, higher fidelity, a uh, localization fidelity of 0 0.52, and then the a segmentation of quality of 0 0.63 in the in this architecture. And then similarly, uh, similar to the dense net, uh, one to one, all the methods exceeded a substantial gap compared to the human benchmark. Yes, they we also saw in the first one. And then uh, performance comparison with the inception uh, version four, you still see that uh, grand cam once again achieves the highest star localization fidelity of 0 0.51. And then the segmentation quality of 0 0.60 among the among the among other methods. Yes, of course, uh, it still stands that there's still a shortfall between the human benchmark uh, uh, persist, uh, persisted in this uh, architecture. The performance still there's still a gap uh, in this uh, in, in the performance. And then, um, so in our discussion. Gradcam, of course, consists uh, consistently outperformed the saliency methods across all the architectures, but uh, of course, its performance still fell short of a human level accuracy. So that revealed a significant gap between the performance of the saliency methods and the human experts, particularly for smaller and more intrinsic pathologies. That suggests, uh, this suggests that the saliency methods may not be, uh, may not be reliable for identifying some findings in, in chest X-rays, which is of course uh, an interesting observation, and uh, of course this correlated between the higher model uh, between the higher model confidence and between the saliency more performance. This suggests that uh, saliency methods might be more reliable when the model is uh, is highly confident in its uh, prediction. So um, of course the limitations we have seen, we have the study only evaluated only seven saliency methods. And of course, three CNN architectures, the general ability of the finding as the data sets and the task need, of course, further, further investigation. Yes, so in a nutshell, in a nutshell, this uh, presentation focused on evaluating the efficiency, the effectiveness of various saliency methods for assessing, for assisting doctors interpreting chest x rays and the key findings. Uh, we used the uh, seven saliency methods. Yes, and three learning uh, architectures were used. That is a dense net, resonant, and exception version four. So of course the grad cam consistently achieved the highest performance among us all the all the all the three. However, all saliency methods exhibited a significant limitation compared to human uh, to human experts. So the performance gap between the saliency methods and the human benchmark highlighted the need for further development and improvement in these uh, in these uh, in these methods. So thank you very much and uh, yeah, I welcome any questions.